Petitioners be for discussion only American Rescue Plan. Um, this is really, really, really preliminary. We just want to get some ideas and put them on there and see what's going to stick and what's not going to stick. Some of the county department heads have already put their ideas there. Got to go on the bucket list just like this and we'll see what uh, sticks and what doesn't stick. It's an evergreen process. It, it's changing every time they have a conference call. So there's nothing in writing today that says it's going to be in writing tomorrow. <clears throat> so let's do this as peacefully as we can. We are going, Greg's going to do an overview and answer any questions you have. And then everybody's got some post-its. Commissioners have a post-it at the desk. When Greg gets through, we'll, you write your ideal down and you go stick it on where it goes. And then after that, the meeting will be over. And then the stuff that sticks, Mr. Martin will bring it back to us at a future meeting. And we'll have some more discussion about it. There's a whole lot of uh, legwork and stuff has got to be done uh, to make sure that it's uh, what you want is uh, will work into this money. So with that, I'll ask Mr. Pastor Cameron if he'll lead us in prayer. If you please stand and mark these pledge leaders. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of living in the greatest land on earth. Thank you for the freedom that we have, the liberty to gather like we are. Thank you for free elections. Thank you for the privilege of being elected to represent those of this community, to represent them well, I pray we would. Give us discerning minds and hearts. Although we acknowledge we're living in unprecedented days, and because of that, it calls for unprecedented measures. So I pray that you might count us worthy of the high calling that you place before us. Lord, I pray we would be selfless, that we would be smart, that we would be led of us. In Jesus' name. This is a PowerPoint. We've, we've uh, pulled excerpts from a PowerPoint that was um, presented by the School of Government here up in London at the School of Government on August 12th. They hold these, uh, they call them weekly office hours. They're, they'll review updated information or whatever and then provide a time for um, questions from local governments, counties, that type of thing. And it's really helpful. The one thing I want to share with you is how this information is evolving on an ongoing basis. So something, Lisa, and Lisa does a good job of participating in these every week. Um, something, information she may have heard a certain thing back a month ago, 
made a change mm -hmm. last week. And so that, that's continuing to be the case. The one thing that they say, and I'm sure you'll feel this in here, is do not be in a rush to, to make a quick decision on this. So to be caught. Yeah. Okay, I'll just repeat that. Um, is this not working? No. I brought you said no. He said no. I wasn't in the back of anything. I'll try to talk about it. Uh, just for, for an example, look how many names there is for the, you know, these funds or whatever. We're calling various, various names. R, O, R, all kinds of things. Um, this is, these are links to the various uh, resources that describe the allowable expenditures at this point. Again, I'll remind you that um, we're working from an interim final rule, not the final rule. Hopefully by maybe October time frame, we'll have the final rule. So definitely we don't want to make a decision until the last This chart does a good job of helping to show that you will have to we had the information I just showed you had the link to the allowable expenditures from the federal government for ARC. However, in this money, we also have to be sure that any purpose the county uh, allocates for this, these funds is allowable by a state statute. And so it needs to be in the sweet spot, that pink or salmon color, whatever in the middle, it needs to be allowable through the ARC program as well as by state statute. And I'll give you an example right now that was discussed on a recent call, broadband for counties. You hear the three main purposes of this money as far as infrastructure goes, water, sewer, broadband. Well, in North Carolina, counties don't have clear authority to, we can't just construct broad, you know, uh, extend broadband, that type of thing. However, the state budget, Senate Bill 105, has a provision for counties to be able to do that. So municipalities already, they have more authority at this point the state is working on legislation to allow counties to do that. So that's just going to be Okay. <laughs> this is a checklist, and we'll review this uh, briefly. As far as how you determine an eligible project, identify the potential program project, identify the state law authority that goes with them, just mention that. Identify the ARP category that it would uh, fall within or fall under. Look for specific <coughs> guidance from U.S. Treasury. That's the interim final order and or the frequently asked questions. If no specific guidance, use framework set by U.S. Treasury. Identify the specific reporting requirements. Follow contracting requirements if applicable. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we're fortunate here in North Carolina to have several resources, state resources, the School of Government. Uh, Paige Warsham at the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners is excellent to work with and also NC Pro. And though all those agencies are represented on those weekly calls. And then check with your contributions. As far as the broad categories of allowable expenditures, and these are the categories, the, we have sheets of each of these uh, around the room. <clears throat> the first is to address COVID public health, and that includes things like uh, supporting public health expenditures by funding COVID-19 mitigation efforts, medical expenses, behavioral health care, and certain public health and safety staff. Address the COVID economic impact, and this, there's, this is definitely not certain. Um, address negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, including economic harms to workers, households, small businesses, impacted industries, and the public sector. Replace lost revenue. That really, you all know from our um, budget last year, that really is not, that's not an issue. We had a, sales tax and various things. Uh, premium pay, provide premium pay for essential workers, offering additional support to those who have borne and will bear the greatest health risk because of their service in critical infrastructure sectors. Um, infrastructure investments, and that would be investing in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure that I just mentioned earlier. So those are the broad Here's a couple of questions. May we use ARP funds to pay salaries, benefits of EMS public safety personnel who are not primarily dedicated to COVID-19 response? You may recall that last year with the CRF funds, we could. 
we could get them into basically all the public safety folks were eligible. Um, on this, funds may be used for payroll and covered benefits expenses for public safety, public health, health care, human services, and similar employees. Here's the caveat. To the extent that their services are devoted to mitigating and responding to the COVID-19 public health emergency. So, for instance, you would need to prorate your time, you know, determine exactly what portion of the time is devoted. You may consider employee, uh, quote, entirely devoted to mitigating and responding to the COVID-19 public health emergency if the employee or his or her operating unit or division is primarily dedicated to responding to the COVID-19 public health emergency, if otherwise have to figure out a proportional share of the employee's time. Okay. If the employee's wage, wages and salaries are eligible with use, local government may treat covered benefits as eligible use. Uh, so that would be your uh, retirement and various benefits. So the show that emergency leave you were talking about earlier? Yes. That's your right. The emergency leave. May we give our funds to nonprofits on the English public asset at a recent board meeting? No, but your local government may contract with nonprofits as subrecipients to, to spend ARP funds for an ARP eligible purpose that the local government has statutory authority to undertake. Mm -hmm. The contract and contracting process must comply with state law and the federal uniform codes. In this uh, chart, basically, provides greater detail about the process for sharing our funds with nonprofits and other private entities. Um, it allows the transfer of funds to nonprofits and other private entities as subrecipients and in the state law. And so it's, it's, it's pretty specific. So but I guess the bottom line is if you all come up with a project or a purpose for sharing these funds with a, or contracting with a nonprofit, we need to be explicitly clear on the purpose so that we can get okay from the And then that's kind of important. The interim final rule is not yet finalized. Uh, the school of government recommends to make plans but wait for final guidance and state guidance on additional grant funding. It, as you all know, there's other funds that the state is, is going to be allocated a significant amount of infrastructure funds, and so if we can use a portion of these funds to help match and that type of thing, we want to do that to the extent possible. And that's why we're saying not to rush. And that's really the, the, uh, the overview that we have to share. If there are any specific questions, we'd be glad to. Commissioner, any questions? I talked to them. Yeah. Right. When initially when they issued the, the 133 page <coughs> guidance on it, they said that the money could be, it's up to the county commissioners had discretion as to how they allocate the funds and how they spend the funds. Is that rule still in place? That to the extent that it complies with the ARP guidelines and state statute. So, what, so if, if this board decide to categorize things like when we give it to do this to do specific entities to, to give out like a grant program or, or to delegate money, do we still have the authority if we follow these guidelines to set money up in those formats where we want to give money for economic distress in the community that we could basically say we can allocate a portion of these funds for economic strip. It just has to meet the criteria. That, that's right. Have to meet the criteria. And so we would need to be very, very explicit in how those funds would be appropriated and you know the details associated with it so that we could obtain the okay from uh, the school government or NC Pro or whomever. Okay, well what I'm asking if if we came up with that program to set up a some for economic distress business in the county. Would they have to give us justification as to <coughs> how they were economically impacted in order to receive that fund? Would we have that? Would that be left up to us, or would that be statutory in accordance with the rules? Yeah, um, I need to double check. I need to know more about. I mean, I, 
it's hard to say exactly because I'm not quite clear. I mean, if I had a specific example, maybe I could double check. The example I'm saying, if a person was in business, and some places have not, have lost their business completely, but someone has suffered and know that their business funds had taken a hit, and they had to downsize, they have lost revenue, and they need money to regenerate back to their current state, is that person eligible for us to assist? That's what I'm asking. I'm not sure, maybe, maybe uh, is way I'll answer that, but what I would say is that we would need to develop, a, my thought is we would need, there may be more than one in that situation. Yeah. So we would need to appropriate X number of dollars for businesses that meet whatever criteria you're, you know, the county may determine that you may be talking about. And it would be open to, to more than, you know, to you other can, businesses to. So Mr. Cogdell, I think the easiest way to answer your question is, we need to list that thing today, yeah. and then we have to do our legwork. Okay, that's why I was asking. But there's going to be a criteria for any of this money given out. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out when I do my business visa, would that be something that we can consider or was it off the table? We, we don't know yet. That's what we that's when we want to create this gigantic list, and then we're going to work from that list. And, and, and what, and really just mm -hmm. add to that just a little bit more. Whatever that list is, if, it, if there seems to be interest, that's something that the board wants to do, then we'll, that's, we'll try to find out all we can to ensure that those funds are spent appropriately. It still has to meet the state's requirements. That's exactly right. See, that's and why I was trying to explain, Mr. Mark was trying to explain to start with, this thing is evergreen and it's continued to change, so we just want to start today's meeting off, end the meeting day with a list of things that we potentially would consider as commissioners to fund. But, but the specifics have, have not there yet as to how small businesses can obtain these funds. It's not well, there clear yet. The final, the final rule is not uh, in existence yet. So okay. before we would appropriate any funds, we would want to, to wait for that. And again, I, I hope that we hope that's. Uh, so we have to wait on the state to put it together? Or is no, that's the federal. That's the federal, I mean, federal. federal government. So we went to them to put it together, and then we worked from it based on what they put together. And again, and, and on the state side, for instance, on the program like broadband, we need to wait for the state to make a decision because right now the county uh, is very limited in what it can do with regard to broadband. So, so a small business, we can have to wait until we get the, the criteria. And there may be enough, I mean, if we know the details of the situation, we may be able to find out before the final rule is written, but we will still wait to be sure that the final rule doesn't change anything. Yeah, well, I mean, we've got the advertising, we've got the go out and send me businesses to affect, I mean, it's just, but that's what I was trying to tell you. There's a lot of that work and stuff once we, you know, once we list everything. Thought of it, Mom? I know you have this preliminary list, but are we going to consider things that we already looked at budgeting for our own? I mean, did the county already use that fund to? If, if there's a um, one example of something I can think of that may that may fall into uh, mm -hmm. possibility mm -hmm. is, for instance, with the health department. You know, the health department building. Um, we've had discussions about changing, kind of modifying the footprint of that building to help the workflow and the, the customer flow. Mm -hmm. um, that appears to be an eligible use of these funds, so that that could be used. I'm not sure of the other things that are budgeted. You may think of something specific. No, that's the one. I, I also looked at the, um, the um, say, radio. Okay. Like that, right? Right. We're already going to fund those anyway. That, that's another example. Yeah, so we think, that's be, another one that these funds could be used for, uh, we think. But um, or you may work, sure. No, all it says in there is communication. Yeah. Oh, it does. Well, you it. Okay. okay. Well, that, that'd be great on our budget. Then. Yeah. And we can use it for that. Right. So, these items that you, I don't know if you're talking about off this list, right, yeah. these items are going to post it okay. and put on these boards, and then everything will be on post it, and then everybody, everything will be drafted down, and, and then we'll come back and we'll go drag them or eliminate what don't stick, and then we'll, 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 we'll decide what we'll do with the board of commissioners. Mr. Brett. I think it's still safe to say, Mr. Brett, that we need to emphasize the importance of doing this and doing it in a way that we're supposed to and have to, that if we take the steps to do it incorrectly, the taxpayers in the county's got to reimburse these funds. 
But I, the reason I said that, so the audience and everybody know, that's why we have to be particular the way we do it. So if it's incorrect and everything's not dotted right, we have to do it. I just think it's important that you know the community understands through the media sources we have here that we've not just been given a pot of six million dollars to distribute as we see fit. We have very strict guidelines and criteria. So ultimately, it's not up to us. To figure this thing out, it's just up to us to follow the guidelines that the state has set forth, right? Well, it's up to you to determine which projects you may want to fund within the guidelines. Within the guidelines, that's right. Yeah. Mr. Gardo? No, the, 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 the reason I was asking this person specifically is with the funds that's been appropriated for 6.3. And I'm looking in that decision, I have a question about it. When we, as a board, I'm going to make sure I'm correct. Tonight, when we post things up for this piece, anything that we as a board can agree that we want to have submitted and to check if it's okay, we do have the authority as a board to do that and wait to see how those funds can be administered, right? Mr. Gardell, what's going to happen tonight is we're going to take, take this sheet and they're going to, they're, they're, they're going to post it. We commissioners are going up there and put what we want done, and then Mr. Martin will look at them, and the ones that fit the criteria, he will have a list of the ones that meet the criteria and the ones that don't meet the criteria, and he will explain why they don't meet the criteria. And then this board will come back and work off that list, is what I, I think is our intent is. Anything on this list that we don't know for sure meets the criteria? That'll go on a post it, and then Greg will do his legwork to see if it meets or not meets, and then we'll have a list. So, so this has not been vetted yet? No. no. Okay. These are just suggestions. Yeah. We're just kind of sharing it as it kind of. That was, that was the thing I was getting at, because I was listening to talking about nonprofits, the guidelines that govern a nonprofit, and I was looking at one of these, I know it's a nonprofit, and I was trying to figure out how to be coming to that conclusion. I didn't know what you thought about that question. Who had the authority to actually put this in? Not that this has not been vetted, I'm aware of that. These right. just suggest, it's just suggestions. Just suggestions. Right. Any other questions? I have a question. But further no, clarity. We're not taking any questions from the audience. If you want to come to the next commissioner meeting, we'll be glad to hear oh, you. Oh, it's just about the proper Well, we're not going to take any comments from the audience. No, I'm sorry. There's no section for public here, but Mr. Martin, we'll be glad to talk to you at the meeting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you. Anybody got any questions, we'll be glad to talk to you at the meeting. Mr. Martin, please. Okay. Doctor, you got anything else, or are we ready? Um, how does this This is part of the uh, presentation. Well, it refers you back to, like, on. Like right here, number two, it's got page 139, IFR. Our, 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 right. It just That's refers you back to the reference right. to that document. Okay. So, so everywhere in there, there's a reference to, right. to that, what you just so held. So right. Right. Yeah, so saying, and also, I'm going to put on the stick sticky where they work, so that would make it, make it easier. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. One, one last word. Mm -hmm. When we go through this process, and all municipalities in the county have received the same type of funds. Yes, sir. If we do something that duplicates something that they're doing, are we going to come to them and, and a lot of how are we going to know if we're not duplicating something that they're doing? We really need to see what sticks and what don't stick, and then we'll, we'll do the lead work with Martin, whoever. We'll do the lead board to see if it's being duped at the papers and where it's in the county. That, that was a concern, right? Like, you know, the town got a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to do something for a certain particular project, are we going to work in conjunction with those municipalities? Yeah, right? we're going to we're going to take our list and we're going to do all the lead work. And I mean, if it's, if it's broadband or sewage or water or whatever, <coughs> that's a lot of lead work got to be done. Okay. So well, all that will be done before it comes back to the commission to make sure that it's eligible and that uh, it's viable and, and the commissioners mm -hmm. will make the final decision on where the money goes. The only reason I'm making this piece is because we're going to try and develop a relationship with those municipalities whenever we start doing this. 
So they'd be working in conjunction. We got the whole town. And everybody in the town is a town. Probably rather good in the city or not. And I'm asking, are we going to try and work in alliance with those guys to make sure we have a certain project and certain things that's going on in the town? So that's, that's a good idea. We can certainly reach out and find out what, uh, as we develop, the, as the county develops its plans, we'll consult with the town and be sure we have an all the information shared. That's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make sure we don't. They got money. And everybody got money. And I hate to give Blakemere or East Decatur or Little Town some money for a project that they can use their own funds to do. Well, once, that's the, that's. once the list is made, then Greg will, will be ready to answer those questions, I think. But I'll, I'll take the chair of Martin right now. Mr. Bullock's got a question. I've got a question, Mr. Martin. Uh, would that be an application of some type where I, if I wanted some funds, I can complete an application, give you the proofs and everything? Anything like that? I would think we'd have to do something like that. Yeah. And then uh, you have the criteria in there, and then I have to provide proofs or whatever if I lost income, maybe a tax return or something like that. So, Mr. Martin, you, what was that program we did with a $50,000? Yeah. That's it would right. be similar, probably the same thing as that. You want to explain that again real quick? Or you remember? The one we did was $2,500. $2, oh, just $2,500 per company there, yeah. per business. That was so, a criteria for that, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was a criteria. So it would be something like similar to that. Yeah. Okay. The thing about that program is that program was so specific, too. The coronavirus money was more uh, specific in its purpose. The CRF funds, they could really only or primarily be used to try to help with the issue of the coronavirus. But determine who's eligible or not, it would right. probably a similar process. Yeah, yeah I would think so. But yeah. the thing about it is, that was very clear cut. If they were uh, installing any type of preventive measure, protective measure, yeah, yeah. then we would reimburse, and they had proof of receipts, and that type of thing would be reimbursed. This is going to have to be a lot more, there's going to have to be a lot more intention about the specific aspect of how we're helping a business and that type of thing. So I mean, there's a lot more gray area on this. I would think that would need to be flushed out. So, so there is no really no time period is when we think we can have all this finalized as far as the public knowing when they can uh, apply for benefits. No, sir. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't know. About 1224. Let me ask a question. One last question. One last question. I meant that to be heard. If you get allocated half of the fund, you have already received half yes, of the fund. When we do this tonight, did this fund be allocated over the duration of this time? Or would it be a one-time fix and that's it? Or when we come back to the next half of it, we have a revisit again? That's or a would it be a fix? <coughs> that's what I'm asking. Would that be? We're going to do it? this one time and allocate $6 million. You're going to do the whole $6 yes, million sir. at one time? Yes, sir. It's coming next year. That's what I'm asking. It, it, so that's what I'm asking. How about we'll do it? Might as well do it now. So if we would space it out. If somebody wants six hundred thousand dollars, we just say we can give that to them during the duration of the whole program. Is that what we say? We don't. We don't know how we're going to distribute yet. That's why I was trying to explain. There's no answers today till we see what's going to stick. I, I will say. I mean, this this question was addressed on our call last week. Um, <clears throat> say, for instance, the board decided to spend uh, needed to spend four million dollars here by yeah. January. Well, yeah. we're not going to receive our second. We only have 3.1 something right now. Yeah. 3.2, whatever it is. Um, the county could front the difference because we know that we're going to be reimbursed to that program. So, I mean, I will say that. I mean, just to let you all know the same information that we just heard the other day. We could spend it all. That's we could spend it all. But, I mean, not, we wouldn't want to create a cash flow issue for the county. But, I mean, there's as far as that part goes, just to answer Mr. Peterson, we already kind of Add in additional information that wouldn't be an issue in terms of um, not having the authority to go ahead and appropriate funds if the board of commissioners chooses to prior to that second charge being received. Okay. That, that's what I was trying to do on Saturday. Just make sure if we do it, we can say we appropriate it for a minority or for business perspective. We can say a half a million dollars, and that could be for the duration of the whole time until it's also the six million dollars. And not worry about how we disperse it over the period of three years. Yeah, five, yeah, five, well, yeah, five years. Five years. So we could disperse it during that whole period of time that money would be sitting there close to the first during that time. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, the pandemic's not over. I wish it was, but 
So we are also trying to get sort of removed and target. It's not just those that have been affected, but those that are currently being affected. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this is, there's no run, I mean, we really don't need to have too great of a sense of urgency other than we want to help people who need assistance. But at the same time, it is, a, like you say, it's an ongoing issue. Uh, I can back it up. Do we still have money, that COVID money available? No. Okay. We're ready to do a cluster coach. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You get the Mr. Gillespie and see if you've got any suggestions right here and put them on the list and I'm going to start posting these things. Okay. 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 Martin, give us a list. You might want to put your initials on in case you can't read it. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. Let's print, print, print your initials. Look. <coughs> It's evergreen. I'm saying, I bring it out?